This video will be about pivot tables, but it's not for uh, complete beginners. So if you don't know how to use pivot tables, at least a little bit, please go back and watch the first video. It's on the channel. Just go ahead and search for pivot table and you'll find the video. Just watch that first, then come back and watch this video after that. So uh, I'm going to expand sort of on the last video. And I want to, first of all, cover the rest of the functions that are available. And then uh, I'll go into calculated fields. It might be on a separate video, the calculated fields part. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is the data we have. So unlike the first video, we have a couple of extra columns here. So we have customer's age for each transaction and we have the satisfaction score that goes from one to 10, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, right? So we'll use those columns in some extra reporting. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So this is what I have. I'm gonna go and do this pivot table. Here we go. So uh, in our transactions, I'm gonna have to choose my values. So I'm gonna start with something easy. Let's get our sales uh, by something. So values is my sales. And I put a year into my columns to get year to year. And I'll do something like region in bros. Now let's see what we can do. So first of all, I want to go into some of the functions that are available. So as a default, we did sum, right? So obviously we can switch this to average, which is again, pretty basic. We can get the average for each one of those. Uh, and we can also do the count. And count counts uh, numbers. So there's two functions here. One is count, the other one is counter. So count will only count numbers. So right now, because in my sales, I have numbers, I'm basically counting how many. Now keep in mind that count or counter functions do not count blanks. So this is something that a lot of people miss. Have I had a missing value here? It wouldn't count that row in our total. So to give you a preview of that, let's say in Midwestern 2017, we have 467, right? 467. That's in 2017 Midwestern. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove one of those dollar amounts in that year so we can see what happens with our total. So go back here. So 2017 Midwestern, that should be good. So sales is what I was counting. I'm gonna delete that dollar amount and go back to my pivot table and you can see how it decreased to 466. So again, the functions count and counter do not count blanks. So uh, if I was trying to see how many transactions we have uh, and I wanted to count this as a transaction, the sales would not be the field I would want to use for counting. Let's actually do the counter too. So see 2017 Midwestern. So I'm gonna change this dollar amount to some letter. So if we go back and take a look at this, so we should see how, again, the number decreased by one more because count function does not count text. It will only count numbers. So now we basically have one less because of the blank and another less because of the text that we have here. So instead of 467, we got 465. If I switch to counter, which is our alphanumeric count, see it's 466, meaning now we do count the letter, but we do not count the blank. So that's a little bit about count and counter and what you should watch out for as you're doing your calculations, right? So the next 
function I want to talk about is going to be, well, max, min, I guess that's self-explanatory. So if we do max, it will give you, give us the highest number uh, out of the column. And if we give min, it will give us the lowest number out of the column. So basically this would represent what's the lowest dollar amount we have in Midwestern in 2015 in one sale. And the max would represent what's the highest dollar value we have for Midwestern. So there it is. So uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is median. Okay, so to do the median, I'm going to switch my value field. And this time I'm going to start using the customer's age. So as a value field. So customer's age, just we can see that's how old the customer is. So for example, we might want to know what's the average age of our customers. So if I go ahead and add it to our values field and customer's age, now as a default, it's gonna go under sum, which obviously doesn't make sense. We're adding people's ages here as a total. That is not helpful, but if I go ahead and switch that sum to average, we could see what's the average age of a customer. So there it is, see 35 years old, 34 years old, 32 years old. So that's our average age for a customer. Now, if we go the median, median gives us the median age. And what does median do? So uh, basically, let's see, let's talk about it really quickly here, right? So let's say I have some numbers here. There it is. What does average do, right? Average is gonna sum up all these numbers and then divide by how many numbers we have. So uh, average is basically, let's sum all of these numbers and then divide it by how many? So one, two, three, four, five. So that's our average. So if we use our average function, we should get exactly the same result. That's average, now the median is different. So what median is going to do, it's actually going to take these numbers, I'll keep them like that here, and it's going to go ahead and sort those numbers. So let's just do that. So see, the first is gonna sort all those numbers from the lowest value to highest value, and then it's gonna look for a number that's right in the middle. So right now we have two numbers here, two numbers here. This isn't the number right in the middle. So median should return 34. Oh, not the median of that, the median of this whole thing, or the median of this, it wouldn't matter because it's sorting it in the function anyways. So there it is, we got 34 as a result. Now, uh, that's when you actually have uh, something in the middle. So what if we have only four numbers? Now it's more challenging because there is not no number right in the middle to pick one. So what we do in those cases, we basically find the two in there and we do the average of those middle two numbers. So in this case, we get 2850. So now if I do median, of these numbers, see, I'm getting that 2850. So that's what median is going to do. So it's either the average of the two in the middle, or if there is a middle, we're just basically selecting that number. So there it is. So that's our median age. That could be useful in a lot of cases. Okay, so the next function I'll talk about is standard deviation. Standard deviation, standard deviation for population. There is variance and variance for the entire population. So basically this is the one that's N minus one, and this is the one that's N. So if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, I have a video covering standard deviation, standard deviation for population and variance in detail and uh, explain what exactly these functions do. Uh, but for right now, I'll go ahead and do standard deviation. 
So basically I get, what is it, like about 10 point something. And uh, in short, what it does, it basically looks at how far apart my ages are usually from the average. So if the average age is about 35 years old, so usually in average, uh, we are like 10 years above and 10, 10 years below. Now, again, uh, the thing about standard deviation, it's not actually that 10 years, that metric is not exactly accurate. So for that, you may want to use like average deviation to get an exact metric for average age distance from the average, but it's pretty close. Yeah, standard deviation. So again, you can do standard deviation. You can do standard deviation for the entire population. You can also do variance, which which is going to be basically the same number, power of two. There it is, one hundred sixteen, whatever it is, and that's our variance of population. So those are those functions. So there is product. Honestly, there hasn't been that many cases when I've seen how you could use the product as a useful function. So product, what does product do? Product is basically like multiplication sort of thing, right? So if we have three, four, six, and we do product of those numbers, See, I'm getting 72, and what it is is basically it is 3 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 6, and that gets me to 72. So it basically multiplies all the numbers in a group together. And as I said, I'm not sure where you would use that. If you know, just comment and let me know where it would be useful. Uh, and finally, I want to talk about count unique as the last function here. So the count unique, so let me actually go back to just this. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and count sales reps. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna count the sales rep column using counter function. So I'll go here, uh, get this out of the values. I'm gonna add sales rep and I'll use counter function because it's text. So see, I get 3,622. And because we're using counter, we can count text. And what it's doing is basically, if we count 2017, it's gonna take all of these 2017 names and see how many we have, but it's gonna count each one, each one of the cells as one. So even though we, for example, have multiple repetition of a single name, they all count as one. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the way we count. So what if we wanted to know how many unique sales reps in that particular group? This is where you use count unique. So if I do count unique, see 20. So now we see that for example, in our Midwestern region in 2015, we had 20 sales reps. That amounted to that total amount of sales we had before. So let me actually add another values field here. See, that's the total amount of sales, and that was done by 20 reps. So if I, for example, switch it to like brands, and remove that, add brand, and I'm gonna do brand count unique. Now, what that's gonna show us is that in Midwestern region in 2015, we sold 10 different brands of product. All right, so the same way, so we could do the state and see how many unique states we have in each one of those. So if I remove this one, the brand, I'm gonna add the state and do count unique. See, we have seven states 
that we're selling to in Midwestern region. Three states in Northeast, two states in Western. So that's the way it works. So this count unique is actually available uh, in functions as well. So if I had like, let's do a sample of this, R T R B. So if we count unique this, So you're getting five, and what it is is one, two, we don't count this because it's already here, one, two, so this is three, four, we already have an R, so we don't count that, and five. So we got a five in our count unique. And those are the functions you can use that are available in your functions list. I think I'm gonna end it on this video, and then on the next one, I'll go ahead and start talking about calculated fields and how to go about using those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.